right, awesome fellas, welcome back to the channel with me, Faye. Buckle up because we're about to rev up the magic of Content Manager. I use it to keep my game in tip-top shape without turning my computer into a toaster oven. Got some tricks to help you organize your content and squeeze out every last frame per second, making you feel like a true sim racing wizard. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button if this helps, and check out my other videos for even more fun. Basically, I'm about to show you how I use Content Manager. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about something that might just revolutionize your garage, custom tags. I apply these little beauties to every car in my collection. Why? Because who doesn't want a more organized lineup of digital dreams? It's like Marie Kondo for your virtual cars, only with less crying and more horsepower. So here's the deal. Each car can have multiple tags. For example, I slap on tags like turbo or engine type, you know, V6, V8, or whatever makes your engine purr. I even tag my personal custom rides because, let's be honest, my tweaks deserve their own fan club. Then there are tags based on real life racing classes like GT3 or GT4, because if you can't race them in real life, might as well live vicariously through pixels. And here's a little pro tip. I also do tag cleanups. I get rid of those unnecessary tags like country names because every car already has a country field. It's like decluttering your closet, but for cars, less clutter, more speed. Now, you might be wondering why I go through all this tag madness. Trust me, it's worth it when you're hunting down a car based on a specific tag. But don't worry, I'll get into that little nugget of wisdom in a bit. So you've got this epic tag system set up. Now it's time to actually use it like a pro. Imagine you're itching to take a turbocharged beast out on the track, but you're not about to scroll endlessly through your whole car list. Nope. Instead, you just hit that search bar, type in tag turbo, and all your turbocharged monsters line up, ready to roll. If you look up top, you'll see a row of clickable text, most of them starting with tag. Whenever I click on one, it instantly pulls up everything related to that tag. Think of it as the previous search result for turbo, but instead of clearing it out, I keep these search results open. This way I can jump back to them anytime. Uh, I'm basically turning these unclosed search results into a quick access system for organizing my cars based on the search filter. The tag feature is actually just one part of Content Manager's powerful filtering system. This tool is packed with options to organize your cars down to the tiniest detail. You've got filters for brand, year, class, and so much more. Want to get fancy? You can even combine filters to track down something specific, like all the Japanese cars released in the 90s. Just type in country, Japan, and year, 199 that ends with question mark. Hit enter and up pops a list of iconic 90s Japanese cars at your fingertips. For a full breakdown of all the filter options, head over to the About menu and check out the Everything About Filtering section. Trust me, once you see what's possible, organizing your garage becomes a whole new level of satisfying. You can even customize the order of those clickable filters up top. Um, just drag them around to put everything exactly where you want it so your favorites or most used filters are always within easy reach. Let's get into another way to organize your car collection, the Categories feature, just chilling there in the Drive menu. Click on the Change Car icon, and you'll see options for picking out your ride, but instead of scrolling through the whole garage, go for Categories. Now you've got a bunch of handy categories at your fingertips. Think of it as sorting your cars with a little style. You'll find categories like Main, Decades, Motor, series, and types. Now here's the cherry on top. You can actually customize these categories. You can rename them, change descriptions, swap icons, and even control how cars get assigned to each subcategory. Think of it as playing Puppet Master with your car list, all based on tags, country, year, and whatever else tickles your fancy. Fair warning, um, this level of customization means cracking open some files in the car categories folder inside the main content manager settings folder. If you're thinking, oh, just some light notepad work, well, let's just say it's a bit more involved than jotting down your grocery list. But it's actually pretty manageable once you peek at the structure of the existing files. Just imagine it's like trying to assemble IKEA furniture, but with cars and less swearing, hopefully. Putting in the effort here is totally worth it though. Once you're done, you'll have an organized car collection that's tailored just for you ready to go for any track day, time trial, or I feel like driving something weird today moment. 
If you're looking to fine tune results, the filtering search in the lap times section can help. Just hover over the search bar and a tool tip pops up showing you all the available filters specific to this section. It also highlights the everything about filtering section, guiding you to where the full filter guide is available. When you're collecting cars, tracks, and mods like their Pokemon, your hard drive starts looking more stuffed than a burrito at an all-you-can-eat night. Especially with cars, those bad boys can range from petite little files to absolute space hogs, depending on the model quality, texture files, and how many skins they're rocking. The more skins, the bigger the file size. But don't worry, we've got a trick up our sleeves to keep things lean. Head over to the Compress Files option in the Content section under Tools. This nifty feature squishes down textures and models, saving precious disk space and speeding up your loading times. Once you hit Launch, the tool goes into detective mode, scanning through the models and textures of all your beloved cars. Now hold tight. This analysis can take anywhere from a coffee break to a full-blown meal, depending on how many cars you've stashed in your digital garage. Uh, we're talking anywhere from three minutes to over 10 if you're hoarding cars like they're going out of style. When it's done, it'll reveal just how much disk space those uncompressed files are gobbling up, along with an estimate of the space you'll save. At this point, all you need to do is hit that compress button, sit back, and let it work its magic. This part might take a bit, so maybe grab another coffee or a nap. One of my favorite content manager features that adds a bit of movie magic to your car showcase, the dynamic intro camera. Yeah, I totally came up with that name out of the blue. Picture this, every time you hit the track, instead of just being slapped onto the tarmac, you get an automatic cinematic camera sweep around your car, showing off its angles like it's auditioning for the Fast and the Furious. To set this up, pick a car and jump into the CM showroom. Head over to camera settings and click that edit button. Don't freak out when Notepad pops up with a bunch of code mumbo jumbo about camera movements. You don't have to touch a single line, just close it and check the follow trajectory option to preview that sweet camera movement in the showroom. It's like instant Hollywood. Sure, you can go all tech wizard later and tweak the code if you want, but honestly, the default setup already looks slick. This next feature is something I don't see a lot of people using, but it's a real gem if you're into sound swapping. You know, taking the engine sound from one car and slapping it onto another, either because the original sound didn't do the car justice, or you just feel like mixing things up. And get this, you don't even have to launch the game to check it out. So here's how it goes. Pick the car with the sound you want, open up the CM showroom, and head over to the Car Params tab. Scroll down a bit, you'll find the sound options waiting for you. First, Make sure the Enable Sound box is ticked, and then check Engine Sound to hear the car's engine and exhaust come to life. Now push that throttle slider up past 50% and play with the RPM slider to hear the engines roar across different rev ranges. And if you're curious about turbo sounds, play with the turbo slider to check if the car has that built-in turbo purr or not. By default, the sound you're hearing is from the outside of the car, thanks to the external engine sound option being ticked, but if you're wondering how it sounds from the cockpit, just uncheck that box and experience the sound from the driver's seat perspective. With this feature, you can test out all the audio glory without waiting for the game to load up. A true time saver for all you sound swappers out there. If you don't see the sound options in the showroom, it's just a quick setting adjustment. Head over to the settings menu, then go to the content manager tab. In the plugin section, look for the FMOD plugin that's the one that activates the sound options in the CM showroom. Just enable it and you're all set. You can enable or disable any of the Content Manager plugins right from this page. When you activate a new plugin, Content Manager will automatically download it, so no extra steps needed. Simple as that. All right, moving on to a couple of hidden gems that might not seem flashy, but can be real lifesavers. First up, ratings. You get to be the judge here, giving cars a rating from one to five stars. Now, my rating system, it's a mix of how the car handles, its performance, the model quality, and of course, my ability to keep it out of the wall. As you can see, most of my cars fall somewhere between 2.5 and 4.5 stars. That's my sweet spot. If it's got 4.5 stars, it's a keeper, something I enjoy driving without a hitch. But don't expect to find a whole garage full of five-star cars. Those are rare gems in my book. And then we've got the notes feature. 
This one's a personal favorite for anyone who loves to tinker. Whether you're swapping out a steering wheel, changing up the physics, or just adding new rims, Notes let you keep track of all your mad scientist experiments. In my case, it's a running log of my customizations, just so I can remember what Frankenstein creations I've made along the way. Handy, right? Next up, we've got a feature tucked away in-game while you're on the track. I've noticed a lot of players totally missing this neat addition. Some don't even realize it exists, and honestly, they're missing out on a slice of sim racing luxury here. So here's what you do. Nudge your mouse cursor over to the right edge of the screen like you're coaxing a shy cat out of hiding. You'll see a menu pop up. Now, type in App Shelf and click on it. Once it opens, get ready for a whole toolkit of apps that's just begging to be explored. Inside the App Shelf, you've got everything from controller tweaks to radar to setup exchange, even a web browser and internet radio. The radio actually works, so while you're carving corners, you can also be jamming out to some beats. Let's take it for a spin. Pretty cool, huh? It's like having your very own DJ in the passenger seat, minus the annoying song request. Here's one more handy feature that's probably flown under the radar. You can actually open up the CSP settings while you're in the game. No need to exit back to the main menu. Just hit Control, Alt, Back, Tick, and the settings panel will pop up right there on the track. This shortcut is a real time saver and makes tweaking a breeze, especially since you can see the changes instantly. Uh, perfect for those moments when you want everything to look just that little bit extra. And a word to the wise, don't get too click happy while you're still moving. Last thing you need is to suddenly inspect a wall up close because you were adjusting neck FX. Pull over first, or you might find yourself testing the crash physics the hard way. All right, picture this. You're trying to fix some weird issue in Assetto Corsa. Maybe your car's missing shadows, the showroom looks like it was pixelated on purpose, or the game straight up won't start. So naturally, you start asking around on forums, Discord communities, or you make a post on the Assetto Corsa subreddit, only to be met with radio silence. Or worse, you get trolled or hit with rude comments calling you a noob. Not cool. But here's the kicker. There's actually a helpful feature hiding in plain sight that could spare you all that head over to the Important Tips tab in the About menu. Yeah, this stash of troubleshooting tips might have exactly what you're looking for. No snarky comments required. So next time you're hitting a wall with the game, give that Important Tips tab a quick look before venturing into the online chaos. You might just save yourself a whole lot of frustration. All right, awesome fellas, that's a wrap. You made it to the end. Give yourself a pat on the back or maybe go do a victory lap. We just covered some seriously underrated content manager features that'll make your Assetto Corsa experience smoother than ever. Before you dive into those menus, hit that subscribe button and drop a thumbs up if you found something new. Don't be shy, leave a comment. Let me know which feature surprised you or if there's something you'd like me to cover next. And remember to check the community tab for updates and if you're feeling extra awesome, take a look at my Patreon. Following is free and any support is much appreciated. All right, folks, that's it for today. Keep your cars cool, keep your settings optimized, and as always, stay awesome.